Hey guys, have you ever just wanted to make an AI or a monster that follows you in your games in Rec Room? Well, in today's video, I'll be showing you how to make an advanced Goblin AI with animations and everything in one video. But first, if you don't know what a Goblin AI is, we're basically just using Rec Room's Goblin, like you see in the quests, and we're just customizing it to make it our own AI. So I hope this will help you on making an AI, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is make your map right here. And then you'll need to select your map and clone it down to a certain distance to where you can't hear the AI from the main map. So for me, I'm just going to put it like right here. But for you guys, you put it like way below this so players can't hear the goblin. Then you want to go to this room and go to settings and scroll all the way down. Until you see this beta switch right here and turn that on. Then you're going to want to get a spawner component and spawn it on your bottom map right here. This is where the AI will be spawning. Then configure the purple part. Click set object and make this a goblin, a melee goblin. Now configure the spawner component chip and attach it. And I'm just gonna bring this over to here where I'm gonna do my circuits. Now come back over to your spawner component, configure it and give it a tag. I'm just gonna give it the tag of M. So now we're gonna need a monster. I just have this stick figure thing that has a walking animation with it. You can get a trigger volume and just place this around your monster. Make sure your monster is like in the back of the trigger volume and then some more trigger volume in the front. So when the players hit the trigger volume, then they'll get jump scared. Then you wanna get a clamp. So first clamp your trigger volume to the clamp, then clamp your animation controller to the clamp. And now if you move the trigger volume, animation controller move, will move with it, but not the monster. The monster will only move with the monster if you play the animation. So now it'll move with it. So now configure your trigger volume chip and detach it same with the animation controller chip detach that too and now bring these two chips over here and also for a jump scare get a seat and just move this to where you want the players to be seated at then clamp the seat to the clamp now configure the seat chip and attach this now bring the chip down here so now we're actually going to make the ai First get a event receiver and configure it. Scroll all the way down and make it update 30 hertz. Get a set transform. You need a record object, get first with tag. You're gonna wanna put the goblin tag in here, so the tag of the goblin down there. So my tag was M. You wanna get a get position, vector three create, and a vector three split. And get an add chip. So we're gonna need to get the position of the goblin and then connect this up to the vector three split. Now connect the X to the X and the Z to the Z and the Y to this add chip right here. And we're gonna add this by how high your map is, but mine, this map right here is, is in negative since the floor Y zero is like right here. So it's below that. So this is probably like maybe a five for you guys. It'll probably be like a high number, like 60. Then it connects up to the Y and then this vector three to the position. Connect this target to the trigger volume since this is, that's your AI. Then get a combatant, get velocity. Get a from record object and connect this up to the record object at first with tag and this to the combatant. And this velocity right here is going to be their rotation. Then we're going to get an if chip and get an is valid. And then connect up to the if chip. And then this is valid right here is going to connect up to this tag. So when the monster is on, then it will start the AI. So you don't just keep on getting logging errors. So now go to this room, go to settings, and scroll all the way down until you see this bake nav mesh button click bake nav mesh now if you want you can manipulate the nav mesh to make it so it's perfectly right on your map right here so the bottom one right here then if i spawn the ai as you can see the ai is like way too close to the goblins so we're just going to change this add chip right here to like 15 that might be way too high oh that's perfect but we don't want the ai to have a combat behavior on spawn so we're just going to configure the Spawner component and change this to disengaged and turn this off. So now we're gonna make it so that AI will roam around the map when he's not chasing after somebody. So first get a AI path point and delete the object board and change this pause time to one. And now just clone this around your map a couple of times. You don't need this on every single turn. You just need a uh, you just need a couple of them on your map. So that should be good. And now go to your connect tool and connect all of these up to just randomly it doesn't it doesn't have to be a certain way just start connecting these up and have the arrows start like pointing to each other that should be good i just connected them up a ton of times so now when the goblin goes to one of these path points then he'll choose one that's connected to so this one it would just go to that one way over there since that's the only one that this is connected to so now we're gonna get a random from list now get a record object get all with tag and then kind of accept the random from list and the tag right here is going to be the tag that's on the AI path points, so just AI path point. 
Make sure you spell that exact or it's not going to work. See, I have six AI path points. Now get a AI set patrol point. Then you can accept to the random from list. And the AI is this right here. For me, it just created a frame record object chip. If it didn't, then just get a frame record object chip and then connect it up exactly like this. Now I'm just going to clone this frame record object because for some reason it doesn't do the same thing with this. So it just connects up to the frame record object and this to the patrol point. Now we're going to need a delay chip to kind of delay the spawn from the random from list. So it connects up to the spawn after delay, random from list, and the delay just make it one second. Now if I spawn this in, then the AI will spawn and then he will start going. He went to that one, now it waits for one second and it goes to a different one. So now we're going to make it so when a player is close to the AI, then the AI will start chasing the player. I'm going to be using a raycast so the AI doesn't detect players through walls. Get a subtract chip, connect this up to the direction and the max distance. Make the max distance on however, on how far you want the AI to see. So I'm just going to do 10. Make the start position the trigger volume up here. It also just created a get position chip. So get a get closest chip and a get all players chip connect this up to the targets and the origin is going to be the this trigger volume now get a player head position connect this up to the closest now connect up this get position that's connected to the trigger volume to the bottom of the subtract chip and connect this head position to the top of the subtract chip we also need the if local player is room authority chip and connect this up to the if they're 30 hertz and then i'm authority up to the if chip so now the ai will only run for the room authority now get an if chip and then clone this is valid connect this up to the if chip and then and we're going to check if this player is valid. If the player is valid, then the AI is going to start going to the player. So we're going to get an AI path to connect this up to the then, and then this AI connect this up to connect up to the from record object, and then connect this target up to this player right here. Then we need to set the speed so make the AI faster when the AI sees something. So connect this up, and then the AI is going to be this from record object type right here. And then make the speed on however much you want. I'm just going to make mine like five. Now clone it down. This one's just going to be your normal walking speed. So if it doesn't see anybody, then it's going to go back to its walking speed. So I'm going to change this back to three. And then connect this up to this from record object chip. So now if I spawn in the AI, he'll start wandering. If I get close to him, then he'll start chasing me. But if I get away from him, then it'll just stop. So we need to make it so he'll go back to the path points again so first we're gonna get a bool variable i'm gonna name it just lock because we're gonna be like locking the the executions get an if chip and connect this up to the lock and make sure this is false keep this false now clone the bool variable down here connect this up to the if chip then we're gonna check if this is false if it is false, it's going to change it to true. So change this one to true. Then on execute this, then it will get a random path point. Make sure this is correct or it will not work. So now if I spawn this in and if I go close to him, then he'll start chasing me. If I go over here, then he will choose a random path point. There we go. But right now, if I'm on the bottom story and if he sees me, then he'll run upstairs and then come to me. So I'm gonna be showing you how to fix that right now. First, just select these chips right here and then clone these over to the side. Clone this get position. We're just gonna get the position of the player that it's targeting. Kind of accept to the vector three split. And it connects vector three to the target. And then we're gonna change this add chip to a subtract chip. Now make this value the same value that this was. So mine is 14.8, so make this 14.8. If you want, you can get a reroute and connect these values up. So in case you want to change it, you don't have to just keep on changing both of them. So now this should fix it if I spawn him in. If he sees me and I come downstairs, then yeah, there we go. He'll come down and search for be fine. But I'm making it a bit faster, so I'm just changing the speed to like seven. And also one thing, this spawner component will only spawn, it'll only work if the room authority is executing it. To fix that, to make it so everyone could spawn it, we're going to get a event definition. If you want, you could name the event definition. I'm just going to keep it how it is. Get an event receiver and get an event sender. Configure the event sender and make this the event definition. Make this target right here, room authority, and configure the event receiver, and make this event receiver event definition. Then connect this up. So now if anyone executes this, then this will only execute for the room authority. Same with the reset right here too. So if you want it to reset, just connect this up to reset. All right, so now I'm showing you how to use these animation controllers. To make it so when the AI sees a player, it'll start running, but when the AI is just roaming, it'll be walking. So I'm just gonna configure this animation controller and scroll all the way down and click this and delete all the board content. So since I have one animation, I'm gonna be using an animation set speed. 
so it's gonna speed up the walking animation. I'll show you how to do the two animations a little bit more in the video. So I'll connect this up to here, and this animator is gonna be the animation and the speed. Let's try like seven. Then I'm just gonna clone this down to so when the AI doesn't see a player, we're gonna connect this up to the animation set speed, this up to the animator, and then the speed speed up to like two. Then connect this up to the random from list. So now if I spawn in the AI, it sees me, it kind of speeds up a little bit. Oh yeah, there we go, now it slows down. Now you have a walking and running animation, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now instead of using the animation set speed chips. We're gonna need two animation plays and two animation stops. So for the running one, we're just gonna attach this here and connect this one to your running animation and then this is going to stop your walking animation. So like this, I have a walking and running animation, then it will play the running animation and then stop the walking animation. Same with down here, we connect this lock to the animation play and animation stop. Then this will play the walking animation and stop the running animation. And then don't forget to connect this up to this random from list right here. But since I don't have two animations, I'm just gonna use this animation set speed. All right, so now if you just have any like audio or running audio you wanna add for the monster, first you wanna get an event receiver and configure it. And we're gonna be using this variable right here. So configure event receiver and just search up whatever that variable name was. So lock changed. If the AI sees somebody, then it changes this lock to false. If it doesn't see anybody, it'll change it back to true. So we're just gonna clone this if and just connect this up and connect this up to the condition. And now this else right here, connect this else to your running audio and then the then to your walking audio. I don't have any audios right now, but just connect those up and it should be good. All right, so now we're gonna do the jump scare. So first I'm just gonna configure the C chip and just scroll all the way down and delete all board content just to save some chips and make it more organized. So the first thing you're gonna get is a seat set seated player and a seat set lock players in and a seat unseat player. And then get a delay and if chip. And I'm just gonna clone this is valid down here up here. So first connect the player entered to the seat set seated player. Then if you want, you can connect this player to the player on the trigger volume. Then on success, we're gonna lock the players in the seat. The target is the seat. Change this lock players in true because we're gonna be locking the players in. Then after that, it's gonna run a delay for however long your jump scare is going to be, so mine's two seconds. And then you're going to connect this run to whichever animation you have. I don't have an animation right now, so I'm not going to connect it to anything. So then after delay, it will unseat the player, the target is the seat. So if someone enters the trigger volume, the player will get jump scared. Then after two seconds, they'll get unseated, but there's no thing to teleport them yet. So we're going to do that right now. So we're going to get a set position, a get position, and get an invisible collision. Now configure the invisible collision and disable it. Now configure your invisible collision chip and detach the chip and scroll all the way down and delete all board content. Now this is where the player is going to spawn after they get jump scared. So we're going to get the position of the invisible collision, connect it up to the position of the set position. For the target right here, we're going to use a get local player chip. Then connect this up to the target. So now my AI is right here. If I run into the trigger volume, I get jump scared for two seconds. After two seconds, I get teleported. That's a little bit long. I'm changing this back to one second. All right, now we're gonna add a target player system for the AI in case you want to make like some sort of console that people go by so they could target players. So first, get a player variable. We're gonna name this variable target player. Then sync this variable. Then we're gonna move the if chip and the is valid to the side. Select the is valid and the if chip and clone it to the side. Then connect these up and then connect this else to this if chip and this is valid to the target player variable. So whoever you want the player to target, you're gonna put them in this variable. Then we're gonna clone the AI path two, then connect the then to the AI path two, and the AI is this from record object right here. Then we're gonna wanna do the same thing like we do for the closest player. We're gonna clone these vector three splits and vector three create. Clone it down here. I'm gonna clone this get position down here. If you're using this reroute, you could connect this value up to the reroute. Then we're gonna get the position of the target player, connect this up to the vector three split, and then this is going to be the target on the AI path two. Also connect this up to the AI set pathing speed. So it sets the pathing speed to the running speed and then also changes this bool variable to false. And then it just switches the AI to the running 
mode. All right, so now if we just do one final test. So you might see your AI stop randomly like this. And I'm just gonna show you how you can make a debug system to make the AI so it never will stop in one place like this. So remove these two chips to the side, up if it hurts and if local player's room authority. Then I'm just gonna clone this delay up here. Then connect this room authority to the run on the delay. And then make this delay, I'm just gonna keep it one second. Connect the run to the if chip and then the after delay to the cancel on the delay. Then clone this if chip down and get a lesser equal chip and connect this up to the condition on the if kick the cancel to the if chip and then connect this a port to this combatant get velocity speed then on the b port make this like make this a pretty low number so i'm just gonna make a one so right now he is frozen so this is true so if it is true and he is frozen then it's gonna get a random from list so path point so he'll just keep on pathing too so it keeps on checking if he ever gets frozen if he does then he'll go to one of the path points so now if we do one final check to the ai if i go close to him he'll start chasing me if i go out here he will walk away and start going to one of the path points so now if i go close to him and he jump scares me, then that should work. Also, make sure you have no other event receiver update 30 hertz that are connected to some sort of chip that are making errors. Also, make sure your net and CPU is low or else your AI wouldn't work. If your net is at 100 or CPU is at 100, then your AI will not work at all. If you have any errors like this, like constant errors, then that means there's some sort of update 30 hertz that's connected to something that shouldn't be. So like this, if you have something like this, then sometimes your AI wouldn't work because this update 30 hertz will cancel out this update 30 hertz. Because I'm not sure when, but usually if you have too much update 30 hertz or if you're, one of the update 30 hertz is connected to something that it shouldn't be, then the other update 30, all the other update 30 hertz will stop working. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to make multiple AIs in your game. If any of you want multiple AIs. So first, we're gonna go over here to the AI and just select all of it and just clone it over to the side. And also move this trigger volume to the side. And then go down here and clone over the spawner component to the side. And then configure the spawner component. And make sure it is disengaged and this is unchecked or the AI won't work. Now remove the tag and give it a different tag. I'm just going to give it the tag of E. And make sure to just separate all your chips, like your animation and trigger volume chips. Make sure you have the trigger volume, your animation, your spawner component chips. And just select everything here. And make sure to unselect the animations and the spawner component chips, and just clone this down. And now move the spawner component chip down here. So we're just gonna connect this up to the spawn and then on spawn to the delay. And take your running animation chip and bring it down here and just connect these up to the animation chip. Now take your trigger volume chip and bring it down and just connect it exactly like how this one's connected up to. So connect this up to the get position, just copy this and just make sure it's perfect. Connect up to the origin, the target, and that should be good. If you're also going to make a jump scare for this one, just select all of these, unselect the invisible collision, and just clone this down. And take your seat chip, connect this up to the seats, connect this up to the player entered, also this up to the seat, and then this connects the position up to the same invisible collision right there. Also, don't forget to change this tag to your new goblin AI tag, so mine was E. So now if I spawn in this goblin, then now I should have two AIs. You can see that the CPU is only at 1%, so you could probably add like, I even tested it, but you could probably add about like 10 of these. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to make this advanced goblin AI. I made this new one because my other goblin AI video just had like a bug in it that was kind of important, but I did show how to fix it in my second AI video, but in this video, I just showed how to do everything on how to do the AI, including animations, and just a little bit of extra things. So if you're having any errors, or if you have any questions, and put them in the comments, I'll most likely respond to them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in the next video.